Let's dive a little deeper. The question's been asked again and again. What is it that is present when stillness and movement meet? And in order to answer that question, we have to reconcile a paradox. And that paradox is, how can we be empty and full at the same time? To test ourselves on this, we can ask ourselves, on what does my mind come to rest when it's no longer engaged in a task or a reality that's playing. Are we still saying something like, well, that was my karma, or that's God's business, or that was the divine play, what does your mind come to rest on when it's not occupied with a task? Perhaps this story will throw some light on it for us. The story of a great being called Narada now Narada, like others of his ilk, Naropa, Ashoka, Shankara, was a great scholar, knowledgeable in all the learnings and teachings of the day. But Narada was also a very great devotee of the god Vishnu. One day Narada was travelling when he came to a town and got into conversation with a certain merchant. And after enjoying that conversation, the merchant invited Narada home for a meal. And in accepting, Narada enjoyed the wonderful repast that was prepared by the merchant's wife. But after the meal, Narada said to the couple, I'm sad. Even though you have prepared a very delicious meal for me, and after a delicious meal one would usually feel joyous and satiated. There is a sadness. Oh, said the merchant, what a great sage you are. Indeed, my wife and I are very sad because we have no child. We've been to astrologers, soothsayers, all kind of physicians and the like, and have been told that's not our destiny to have a child. So there is great sadness. Nawada said, do you have your horoscopes cast? Yes, said the merchant, by one of the greatest astrologers of the time. Nawada said, bring them to me. So after studying the astrology charts and the palms of both the wife and the merchant, he said, yes, sadly, it is not your fate to have children. So with thanks, he took his leave of the merchant and his wife. But these thoughts bothered Narada. So, later on, he sat under a tree 
and went into a deep state of meditation that allowed him to ascend to the realms of the gods. And there he met Vishnu. And after the usual salutations and greetings, he said, Great Lord, I have encountered a merchant who is kind and follows the practices of the day, but is unable to give birth to a child. Is there anything that you can do to intercede? And Vishnu said, Narada, Narada, my devotee, don't you know that the laws of karma are inviolable. If it is a man's fate because of his past lives, it cannot be changed. So Narada left that celestial realm, still feeling sadness at his inability to be able to assist the merchant and his wife in their desire. But after some years, Narada had to pass that way again. And he came to that village, and remembering the merchant, he sought him out. And again, after an amiable conversation, he was again invited back to the house for a past. But when they came to the house, there, outside, were three children playing in the garden. And Narada said to the merchant, Well, whose children are these? And the merchant said, Why? They're our children. And Narada was aghast. How could this be? And the merchant explained, not long after you came to visit, a beggar came by, and he shouted in the streets, If anyone will give one loaf of bread to a starving man, they shall beget one child. If they give two loaves, they will beget two children. If they give three loaves, they will beget three children. So even though my wife and I knew that it was not our destiny to have children, we took pity on this hermit beggar and brought him home and gave him three loaves of bread. And when he was leaving, he said, one, two, three children will be yours. And so it was. My wife gave birth to these three beautiful children you see playing in our garden. Now Narada was greatly perplexed. How could this be that an old beggar, hermit, could have greater powers than his? So again, he entered deep meditation and took himself off to the celestial realms, where again after greetings, he spoke to the god Vishnu and said, How can this be? Ah, said the god Vishnu, that hermit was a great bhakta of mine. And when a bhakta gives an order, I am duty-bound to obey. Now, 
Narada was greatly perplexed. But Lord Vishnu, seeing this, said to Narada, Come, I will explain to you, but at the moment your mind is greatly agitated. Let us descend into the village below. And so they did. And as they entered the town square, in which there was placed a great Hindu temple, there they heard the sound of chanting. The smell of incense wafted into their nostrils. And the temple bells rang. Then, just at that moment, the Lord Vishnu fell to the ground, clutching his side. What is it, said Narada, what is it? And Lord Vishnu said, oh, oh, it's my liver. One of my devotees have given me sweets cooked in rancid oil. I need a new liver immediately. Who will give me their liver? Oh, said Narada, oh, and he ran off into the temple and he said, I am Narada, I am Narada, who will give their liver to save Lord Vishnu? And they all laughed at him and continued their chanting. But he said, I am Narada, don't you recognize me? Who will give their liver to save Lord Vishnu? And then those people in the temple pointed Narada to the Ghat by the great river. And so Narada hurried down to the river and there were sadhus washing themselves. And he said, who will give their liver to save Lord Vishnu? And they all laughed at him. But then they pointed to a beggar standing on one leg in a deep state of trance. And they pointed and said, only he would be foolish enough to give. And so Narada approached him and said, Lord Vishnu is dying. Will you give your liver to save his life? Without a moment's hesitation, the old beggar lowered his leg into the water, opened his eyes and beckoned Narada to follow him. He went back to a simple hut on the side of the river and sitting in lotus position and entering a deep state of meditation, after which he took a knife, stabbing it into his side and dragging it around as blood flowed and taking out his liver, he handed it to Narada. Here, give this to Lord Vishnu. The old hermit, as blood flowed down his thighs, entered again a deep and peaceful state of meditation. Narada hurried back to Lord Vishnu and said, Here, here, my Lord, here is the liver to save you. But there was Lord Vishnu himself sitting peacefully in lotus position and looking up at Narada 
He said, You have a liver. Why did you not think to offer me your own? Oh, 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 I, 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 I never gave it a thought, said Narada. Yes, said Lord Vishnu, even though you are a great devotee of mine, your mind is still engaged with intellectual activity. And as has been said, when a great devotee, a bhakta of mind speaks, I am duty bound to fulfill and obey. The old beggar, hermit, who gave the three children to the merchant is the same as he who has just given me his liver. Narada was greatly chastened. He entered a deep state of meditation such as he had never experienced before, as though the bottom had fallen out of his world, devoid and empty, he was filled. So we can ask, what is this that is designated as a bhakta, filled with the bhakti? What is this bhakti? Where does your mind come back to rest when it's not engaged in the fullness of the movement of life? Bhakti. What would it mean if we were to say, I am a bhakta? 